and we are in okay so today i'm just literally grabbing the camera and doing it the old-fashioned way just talking as i go along and anything that crops up i will discuss so i'm going to start with this great big giant thing here this tradescantia zebrina yes it is all zebrina despite the fact that it looks like uh, we've got other things mixed in here what's actually happened I mean, you can see what it's supposed to look like there is the sun's got to it and it's created this rather nice attractive red color now i've had lots of interest in this recently because i put a few posts on various facebook groups on tradescantia just showing it off really and it seems that lots of people are interested in it it is basically just a jute bag it doesn't matter if it's jute you could get a plastic one just the same uh, the key is to make sure that you root all the way down now i only did this a couple of times you can have a look on the video um, the video i'll put a link in the description to the video and it shows you exactly how i did it how i walked through it that's about a year ago now and all I did was put little slits all along and just rooted them, uh, the, these stems, where the nodes were, where it naturally forms roots, and you get this result. I've no doubt that at some point they will start to do the usual thing that Tredescantia do, they will get burr stems earlier on, because of course I'm not continually rooting it, but you know, you just start another one off, that's just the way it goes with Tredescantia. Okay, so since my attack of spider mites, uh, thrips and other little mites they weren't all spider mites because you can tell because obviously they're red things have really started to come back uh, quite robustly like for example this dendrobium kingian up here has just developed these lovely new leaves in uh, this whatever that one is renanthera again some more new leaves on it these orchids in the corner new leaves i mean i'm just wondering whether this was my problem all along i've been looking at all sorts of various causes for things beginning to head south after a year or two and i'm just beginning to wonder whether i just had my thank goodness for those botanists hand lenses so yeah lots of things coming back so we've obviously we've got the pelagoniums we have a lovely orchid here so this is my prosthecia radiata lovely scent to that as well that was beginning to throw a few spikes up and i think the spider mites got to that as well the spider mites have got to everything or the, the mites i shouldn't call them spider mites this begonia here this bower eye beginning to throw some nice new leaves out now that you've really got to get close to that to appreciate it streptocarpus and so on and so forth what else have we got i mean i would say probably out of all my different plants in the greenhouse the nepenthes are probably the only plants that didn't have mites on them and i guess that's probably because they're hanging most of them i really love this one i love the colors in the peristome there that is looking really really nice so that's ventricosa crossed with loei let's just have a little look at what else is going on so my ferns over here my flabodiums they must have had mites on them as well because they've just gone absolutely crazy you may well have seen my bench of streptocarpus look at that isn't that looking great uh, i did show this in a recent video but more and more blooms are coming out now so which is your favorite i've got so many i mean obviously i wouldn't have ordered them if i didn't like them the only one i'm a bit confused about is the white one over there because it's just not a color i would necessarily have ordered so why that one's white no idea that one wasn't out in the video that's ds1126 always a favorite is the hot chocolate over here and yes it tastes and smells just like chocolate <laughs> joking so yeah looking really good texas hot chili uh, harlequin blue i really like this one with the edging on it can't remember what that one's called i know that one's ambient at the back there uh, what was it uh, leah that one's leah that looks gorgeous anything with a bit of an edging on i quite like this is why i like this one so much as it gets older this one it seems to produce more of the edging it's like it starts off where it's almost white and then as that particular bloom ages this kind of creeps in which is a little bit odd a few more streptocarpus up there and um, my great big unifoliate over here that's looking good as well leaf getting longer and longer and once that blooms i'm wondering whether there's any sign of bloom i do want to see these blooms but once it blooms it dies which is a little shame really but it will actually produce seeds and the seeds are really easy i believe to actually propagate so looking down at my cephalotus here so we've got two 
uh, pots of cephalotus so that was my original one that was from some divisions i did i've got a video on that as well and you can see they're all in bloom now got all these great big tall things these spikes i believe can go three or four feet in the wild mine are probably about a foot and a half maybe don't know why i've gone over onto imperial probably about 45 centimeters 50 centimeters even that one probably is about 50 centimeters quite a long one so my king sundew here is looking way better like if you think just about two months ago that was almost invisible it was like a tiny little speck and it took ages to get going and um, the drosera capensis on their own way better on their own definitely not that one definitely better to plant them on their own if you keep them all in a pot like that then they tend to only go about that size so get them out pricked out put them on their own and they will grow much much bigger for you that one over there uh, that one has actually got uh, an attack of aphids and it's completely killed it all off so i've had to spray that but i think it will come back at some point you can see this dendrobium cuthbert's only eye looking fabulous again another one attacked with mites and you can see we've got some nice new green foliage on there uh, what else this dracera here whoa that's just looking great there's two plants in there we've got bionata uh, variety multifida and we've got dracera dichotoma giant my little fern down here that one is one of those plants that if you go and spray it with systemic it loses a lot of fronds i mean these maiden her type you know you only have to look at them wrong and they'll go brown you've just got to be uh, patient with that and just keep cutting them out and it'll send some more up because i really love that i really love that kind of plant uh, i would like some more maiden her actually some of the uh, hybrids the different hybrids would be really nice um, everybody's favorite again over here everybody loves polka dot purple uh, what else have we got going on other streptocarpus up here believe it or not so that is a species uh, and it's not really doing that well it's saxorum it chucks a few flowers out but i do keep getting these dead leaves on it i think actually at the moment where i've got it it's a little bit too hot for it up there i could probably do with putting it somewhere a bit shady if i can find somewhere shady at this time of year now look at these cyclamen over here i'm trying to get them to go dormant never had any trouble in the past but for some reason they've decided to flower again bear in mind these all flowered january february time uh, i'm not watering them i don't want them to desiccate so i occasionally give them a tiny little bit i've repotted a few maybe that stimulated them but that's not all the ones that's bloomed some of them have just bloomed off their own kind of bat so we've got a new mandevilla over here so this one is rosea sanderi rosea nice little scent to it too and when it gets covered in blooms i expect that will be uh, it's beginning to already actually produce the kind of a scent that you can smell i can smell it from where i am here about two feet away and that's beginning to throw a nice shoot up there so the idea is i can get that growing up that side of the greenhouse and then hopefully at some point it will equal what we've got up here with our mandevilla sanderi the red one the great big one everybody no doubt has seen on many occasions if you watch my videos a couple more streptocarpus over there that one's just come out that's harlequin lace um, my dracula as you would have expected having sprayed it it's not that happy with it it's lost a couple of leaves this is it with systemics um, but the problem with, with spraying mites is that very often they go on the underside of leaves so if you get uh, a spray that isn't systemic that is just a contact spray you're going to miss them aren't you you can't get on the underside of all the leaves so i've ended up first of all i used uh, a contact spray which is just what i had in this what is it called new dorf yeah new dorf bug free bug and larva killer this kind of thing anyway you just spray it's a contact spray and that really did help quite a lot as you can see over here from my bougainvillea uh, but it's, it's not going to be like a long-term thing. I really need to spray them with a systemic to try and get that to work uh, over a little bit longer term anyway. Now, bear in mind, this bougainvillea was completely defoliated when I come back from holiday. Yes, because it was a bit too dry, but secondly, because it just was covered in these mites. And when I say covered, it had like half a dozen on each leaf. So there was no way you could see it. The plant actually ejected those leaves before I had a chance to actually spot any webbing or anything like that we've also got 
Uh, remember I did the seeds of Mandeville Alaxa, so we've got two of those growing up here. Now they seem to be quite vigorous, so I don't know whether that's going to take over or not, but I do want the Mandevilla to hopefully bloom again and give me a much better showing this time than it did when it was covered in the little mites. Now who says that Tredescantia Maiden's Blush needs cold in order to produce pink? Now this has already produced pink ones this year and we're now in the middle of July, the hottest time of the year, and what do we have? we have new pink leaves coming. So obviously the cold hasn't got to it, but for some reason it's producing the pink again. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, again, this gorgeous fern suffered from the spray, the systemic spray, but what do you do? You either spray things and get rid of all the little mites and prevent your plants from dying, or you spray them and sometimes that can be enough to cause the plant an issue. But in my experience so far, it's usually only temporary. So there are some new fronds coming out. So when they come up uh, in a week or so, I'll cut all the crispy bits off. So a lot of people have this one. So this is Nanook, isn't it? It does uh, have a species name, if I can grab hold of it. Uh, so apparently once Nanu wears off, it becomes, not that one, Serenthoides, isn't it? Tredescantia Serenthoides lilac after the PGRs wear off. So that's what mine is now. In an attempt to prevent all the markings on the leaves, I've put it in a terracotta pot. I'm only watering it, uh, bottom watering it. And you know what? I'm beginning to think that it's just about frequency of watering. Terracotta works because uh, if it's frequency of watering, then that would tell you that the leaves are getting marks on them because the media is too moist. It really wants to be dry. I've cut some of these in the house and I've not been watering them for weeks. Um, they seem to be thriving more than ever. So temperature is vital. They don't like lower temperatures. They don't like fluctuations in temperatures. They don't like to be really wet all the time. They don't like moisture all the time. Yes, you can get moisture on the leaves. That doesn't really matter in my experience so far it's about that media and the roots can the media and the roots stay at a steady warm temperature and that seems to so far prevent getting all these marks on the leaves same with that one there that one's looking pretty good but that one's only in a plastic pot so that's going to retain some of that moisture in the pot which is not what we want so looking over here to my orchid hospital my a and &E, so far every single one of them seems to be working just by Placing them on a little tiny bit of moss seems to be enough to stimulate the roots, stimulate the growth. I think spraying them with some uh, spider mite spray as well has also helped, but I am beginning to get some little roots underneath and I will keep making sure that they get sprayed and because they're only on moss, it will dry out. So let's nip over to the hothouse and see what's going on over there because there is unbelievable growth over there. So we're in the hot house now and Jesneriads, well this is a Jesneriad, this is actually Escananthus, uh, hot flash I think it's called. We've got one bloom coming out there, there's a few more coming out here, so that seems quite happy where it is. This is actually an epiphytic plant, believe it or not, uh, but it's also in the same family as Streptocarpus. Uh, that looks brilliant when it comes out in bloom. I'm finding all my orchids, all my Cattleya type orchids, are doing fantastic in the sunshine on this side of the hothouse. Much, much better than they did when they were in the greenhouse. I think they're just getting more light and they are being allowed to dry out. So the pots, no matter how many times I spray them, they're drying out. So over here it's all about begonias maybe. Now there's a few Tredescantias mixed in there. So you can see the kind of thing that we've got going on here. We've got the lovely Luxurians, which is looking a little floppy at the moment. I'll have to give that a water. Caleria, sunshine, still, even though it's extremely messy and floppy. Look at the flower power there. But I don't know why people don't grow this. But again, this is great as a house plant. I've not staked it this time. Uh, so this is why it's looking a little bit of a mess. It can be cut back and it will just keep coming again. I have another few uh, caloria dotted about the place. Uh, a couple of begonias over here. If anybody wants to know what these are, just write in the comments. And I also have a Sinjonian panda there. I've now got a moss pole. 
Um, it's supposedly panda, but I'm guessing it's reverted. It doesn't seem to be very stable. I don't know whether I'll keep that. Unless that actually does something in terms of irrigation, I'm not really that interested. Maybe it can go in the house. You might find a place in the house. So, to the scantier lovers, look at this one. It's like a big beehive. So, this is Calicia Rosato. Look at that. Absolutely fabulous. Now, this did almost go completely green over winter. But the light seems to have brought this pink back out again. Look at that, isn't that fantastic? It's very, very tactile. It's like a, a pink cushion. Really like that one. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, you've seen that on a recent video. So that's my Verucosum, Philodendron Verucosum. Another couple of begonias. Look at the light through that one. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's gorgeous. That, that one again, struggled in the greenhouse, seems to be doing better over here, probably a bit warmer for it. We've got the Griffon there, we've got uh, Trediscantia Yellow Hill, we've got Begonia Curly Fire Flush, uh, we've got this one, can't remember what it's called. <laughs> and moving on over, another Begonia F Mazai Nigricans. Uh, what else? Yeah, another nice new leaf on this Monstera Albova Regatta. Still on Aroids, we have the Philodendron Melanocrysum. Melanocrysum. What else is going on? Look at the leaves on this one. This is Begonia Size Moria. I'm gonna do a video just on this one. Look how hurry that is. If you're interested in Begonia Size Moria, please write in the comments, tell me, it'll give me some motivation to do a video just on this. I'm actually trying to contact Murray Sizemore, who discovered it, and I'm about three quarters of the way there. I just hope she's interested. If she's not, well, she's not, is she? I can understand it, but if she is, that'll be marvellous. It'll be great to get a story on how she discovered it. So we've got St. Jonium, Albo Burigata, still love that one. Uh, we have... Uh, Species begoni here, Serratipitella, probably pronounced that wrong. That's looking really nice now, just hanging down nice and see some of the pink. Uh, this Calicia one, so this one is uh, golden. Calicia repens golden. So that is like the golden version of Rosato, which I just showed you a minute ago. Now potted up Begonia uh, melanocry, melan melan melanobulata. Potted that one up, so I hope that one begins to come really nice now that it's out of its moss. It's got a new leaf there, so it should do. Philendron Pink Princess has got a new leaf. I can see a little bit of irrigation on that one. Another begonia over here. And my hoyer over here, this is the first time, I mean, it had never flowered for years, and now I've got one peduncle there, I've got a, another peduncle there. They're not completely out yet, but I mean, just looking at the size of the leaves, I guess this was another one that was struggling with little mites. It seems my entire collection was struggling with mites. Even this philodendron mycans has only started to grow since I got rid of the mites. Here's me thinking my problem was all about fungus gnats. Yes, that was only part of the problem. It seems the mites were an even bigger problem. So moving on over. Somebody was asking this morning about how to grow Begonia listada because those seemed like it wanted to go upright. Well, it's a cane type of Begonia and you can actually do that, but at Kew, I saw them growing it like this. Now, I just, <laughs> it's neglect that's made it grow like that. I just didn't do anything in terms of staking it. They flopped over and I thought, actually, that looks quite nice. I'll leave it as it is. So that's my Begonia listada going off in all directions and it's not actually held up with anything. These stems are actually quite tough. Um, I've not had one snap on me yet. Uh, we've got Philodendron uh, Crystallinum there. We've got the lovely Lemon and Lime there. Um, I recently bought this one and it's got two, three nice new leaves on it. So this is Collocasia Mojito. Um, I'm still waiting for the blooms on this one. I've had to spray these again. These uh, plumeria are just absolute magnets for little mites. And, the, you know, the, the controls don't work. <laughs> they work to some degree, but the mites always come back. So I've got this, what looks like it's going to be a big blooming bud there. Can you see? Oh, there are loads of little buds there. Uh, but I do believe that they can blast at the last minute. So I crowed about it and I'm just hoping that I didn't crow too soon. 
Now this is also a Tradescantia. I never, never see this one. I never see anybody posting pictures of it. So this is Tradescantia Hijar Baru. But I believe that when the PGRs were off, it becomes Cyanotis ciliata. So whether that's in the Tradescantia family, I cannot remember. Um, talking of Tradescantia still, I'll just whiz you around again. So we've got Calizia gentilii up here doing really well actually looking like it needs a water it does get these brown things on it eventually as most of them do and all you do is you cut them back when that happens same over here we've got this uh, albiflora is it Tradescantia. oh no Al albostriata um quicksilver so that one again that was another one that did really, really well, and then just started to go brown. And I'm guessing it's the same reason that Tradescantia zebrina goes brown. They want to root as they go along. They don't want to just be hanging from a little thread at the top of a pot. And I think that's really the reason for that. Another begonia over there. This one is also uh, Tradescantia zebrina variety. So what's this one? We've got variety discolor multicolor. That is kind of, um, and a lot of people love this one. I'm not that thrilled with it. Um, now look at my fern in the corner here. I don't know what to do with it. It's massive. It's this staghorn thing. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I'm not going to have any room uh, to put it anywhere. But again, still on Tradescantia again. So this is my Gibassis. Now look how big this has gone now. Absolutely huge and loads of little white flowers on it, which are quite pretty because there are quite a lot of them. But I think that one so far out of all my Tradescantia, that is the only one that hasn't shown any signs of distress by simply having one little thread at the top and all these trailing stems. So if you want something that doesn't go brown at all, ever, 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 well I've had this one nearly a year now and it hasn't and it's the only one that hasn't. Please write in the comments anything that you're interested in. Oh, just forgot little fern that I'm not really that thrilled with, this asparagus fern, I just suddenly noticed this. So we have a great big climbing stem here that goes all the way down to there. It just kind of worked its way up and then it's just kind of hanging over. I don't mind it like that. It doesn't look so bad like that. So uh, in the comments, anything that you find interesting and I just want to show you again before I go. So my alocasia here look we have a new leaf coming even though it got attacked by mites so that's where we're up to at the moment um, any ideas for future videos anything that you're interested in i always ask that um, it's very very rare that anybody actually suggests anything they probably think well that's your job that's what you have to do you come up with something and we'll tell you if we, if we like it or not which is fair enough I'll you know I've loads of ideas it's just getting around to doing them but I have to say it is really liberating to be able to just pick up the camera and just do a little chat like this sometimes you know we're all busy and sometimes I don't have as much time as I'd like to be able to plan out the videos in detail and set up cameras and it's great just to do it this way but I think you'll agree everything is looking really nice at the moment and let's face it it's July if it's not looking nice in July it's never gonna look nice is it so uh, I'll leave you at that for now and I'll see you on the next one bye